So in our last video, we went ahead and built this crosscut sled. And if your goal is just to have a crosscut sled, this thing will be perfect for that. But the plants have a couple accessories that really make this thing uh, really nice to use in specific applications. So let's take a look at a few of those. So the first thing we have is we have a stop block and we'll go ahead and make that in this video. And I think we'll also go ahead and tackle one of these other ones. Um, our other accessories that we have are a miter fence uh, that creates two 45 degree fences that we can then use to create miters. Um, we also have a, a ripping block, uh, which is kind of fun for ripping down small parts on your sled. And then we also have this small parts tray. And the small parts tray has quite a few parts, so I'm gonna tackle that one uh, right now, I think. So let's take a look at a few of these parts here. Uh, this tr small parts tray basically has two parts. One sits on each side of the sled. The first is a small fence, and we have a stop block on there to set length. Uh, and then the other side is a tray. And this small parts sled is designed so as you cut small parts, those parts fall into the tray, they don't get sucked back into the blade, and you can make repeated cuts on small parts uh, without them getting piled up on your saw. So I think we'll go ahead and tackle that one. Uh, all the parts here are made out of either three quarter inch plywood or quarter inch plywood and some hard maple. Uh, I'm gonna substitute, I think, the quarter inch plywood for some hardboard I have here. That's quarter inch as well. Um, other than that, we have a couple knobs that will have to install and use that to hold that to the T-track we put in the, the sled. So I think we can go ahead and head over to the table saw and we'll start cutting stuff to size. All right, so looking at these plans, uh, we can go ahead and start cutting stuff to size. The nice thing about most of the accessories on here is there's no complicated joinery. Everything basically gets glued to the bases. So I'm gonna start by cutting the bases to size. We have some hardboard that will be the tray side and then we have a layer of three quarter inch plywood plus hardboard that will become the fence side. So we're gonna cut those, then I'll go ahead and tackle the pieces of maple that are gonna become the tray perimeter and the fence. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those cut and we'll head over to the bench and see how we put it all together. All right, so once you have everything cut at the table saw, there's a couple other things you have to do. The first thing I did was after I got done cutting everything, I labeled all my pieces with my part numbers. And I counted them, make sure I had everything cut because there's quite a few little pieces here. The other thing that we need to do while we're at the table saw is to take the tray back, which is part S, and we need to cut a wide rabbit in it. And that rabbit is to hold the hardboard tray top, and that's how we will attach it to our sled. So we're gonna drill a couple holes in there and attach it with some knobs and uh, T inserts. The next thing you have to do, you can do this at the table saw as well, is to take the tray ramp and cut a bevel on it. Now the plans show it being a 45 degree bevel from the corner to corner. This is a pretty small part. So I went ahead and just taped this down to a block on my bench and I used a block plane and I just beveled that quick. I didn't go all the way down to the corner. I don't think it really needs to go all the way down, but you're welcome to cut it all the way down like the plan says. So at this point, I think we can go ahead and start assembling some of this. Now you could just glue these in place. However, I like to speed this along and I love my air pinner. So we're gonna go ahead and pin nail these in from the bottom after we glue them so everything stays in place as it dries. So we're gonna start with the tray front, make sure we have the right parts. And we don't need a ton of glue here. I'm just gonna go enough to cover the bottom. Okay, now let's go with the tray side. Same thing, just glue and pin. Now the ramp. Now let's install that tray back. 
We want to make sure that that rabbet is facing out. That way we can attach the top and that overhang will create the location where we're going to attach it to our sled. All right, now let's lay out the holes in the tray top. And those are gonna be, looks like an inch in from, in from each end. Then we need to position it with the T-track. So this is gonna be how this guy sits once it's in place. So let's just go ahead and mark the center of the T-track on here. And then we will go in an inch from each end. Make sure that fits on here. So these guys will go through those holes. Then they'll simply slide in from the end. There we go. So let's take a look at the other side of the small parts tray. So we have basically a base with a hardboard top on it and then a fence. And that fence is what you will hold your workpiece against, make your cut, and then it will fall into the tray here that we just finished. So I have those parts cut from our time at the table saw. We have the fence base, the fence top. I have the fence. And then I have a couple pieces of hardboard that I'm going to use for the stop. So I'm going to set the fence and the stop parts to the side for a second. Let's go ahead and get this assembled. Here again, I'm just going to glue this and pin nail it. Okay. So now we can lay out our whole locations exactly the same way that we did on this tray. Okay, let's drill those. So now here's where I'm going to do something a little bit different than the plan. I'm going to wait to attach this fence until I can get everything on the saw because I want to make sure that I can square this fence against the blade. So we'll hold off on attaching this for now, but we can go ahead and install a threaded insert into this. So I've already drilled the hole in the fence for this threaded insert. So we'll go ahead and clamp that in the vise and take a look at the threaded insert. So I know a lot of people like to install thread insert using a flat blade screwdriver in the notched end of the insert. However, I like to install that with those down because I feel like those kind of pre-cut the hole and chase the threads before they go in. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this little installer here. And this guy is just a piece of construction grade lumber, has a notch in the end with a bolt and a spring that I can then hold it down and then use a ratchet to install it. And I've found that threaded inserts usually go in a little bit easier if you can apply a little bit of wax to them, especially going into hard maple. Okay, there we go. Now our thread insert's in there, and that's ready to accept a knob with our stop block. And speaking of the stop block, we have to do one thing to that before we go ahead and cut it to size and assemble it. 
So let's head over to the router table and I'll show you what we're gonna do. All right, so here at the router table, we're gonna have to cut a slot in the top of this stop block. So if you look at the plans on the top view, it shows that slot. Now, the slot is dimensioned out as 7 eighths to the center point of the end, and then it continues for an inch and a half. So what I've done here is I've pre-drilled both ends. I've drilled that with a quarter inch bit, and that those holes are centered. And what we're gonna do here is position our workpiece over the bit, and then we're gonna turn the router on while we're holding our workpiece, and we're gonna route from right to left, creating that slot. And again, in the plans, this shows us being plywood. I'm using quarter inch hardboard. It's not that much material, so I'm gonna make this in one pass. So I'm gonna route slowly till I get to the end, and then stop, shut the router off before removing our workpiece. All right, so we have our sled in the table saw binder slots. I've attached both sides. And now we are almost ready to attach our fence. There's one thing I wanna do first though. I've positioned each side so they're fairly snug. They're oversetting the kerf a little bit. That way when I raise the blade up and make a cut, it's gonna trim both edges of both trays. So it's basically zero clearance. So let's go ahead and do that quick. All right, so now that we have a square edge on this platform, we can use that to reference where we're gonna position our fence. So looking at the plans, it looks like the fence is positioned somewhere in the middle of this tray here. But that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me for what I'm gonna use this for. So I'm gonna scooch this back. So the back edge of the fence is pretty much flush with the tray here. And then let's go ahead and use our drafting square that I have, and we're gonna square up the fence to the kerf. Okay, looks good there. I'm gonna mark this location. Okay, so now I have a line that's square to my blade, and that is the position of the back of my fence. So let's go ahead and head back to the bench. We'll get this attached and we'll take a look at that stop block that I glued up. All right, so we can go ahead and get ready to attach our fence to our base. Now we have our reference line here that we marked at the table saw. And I just went ahead and hit the bottom edge of this with a block plane real quick, just to chamfer it. That just gives us a little bit of dust relief. That way uh, dust doesn't collect along the fence and throw off our cuts. So we are gonna go ahead and screw this into place. And I've pre-drilled a couple holes here and I've counterboard those. So we have a larger bit that I drilled first that will fit the head of the screw. And then I drilled an oversized hole through the fence that our screw will pass through. What that's gonna do is that's gonna give us a little bit of wiggle room. That way in the future, if for some reason our fence gets out of square or something moves, we can loosen up the screws a little bit, re-square our fence and tighten it back down. So let's go ahead and get this guy in position. And because I've pulled this off of the sled, we can go ahead and use just a combo square and put it up against the cut edge that we made and line everything up. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna throw a couple clamps on here just to hold it in place. Yeah, let's double check one more time. There we go, that looks pretty good. So now we just have to drive those screws in. Okay. Pull that clamp off and check our square one more time. Okay, and it did move on me a little bit, so we'll re-square it. There we go. All right. So we're pretty much perfectly square there. So let's take a look at our stop block. So after we routed that slot at the router table, I went ahead and head over the table saw and cut it to size. 
That was both the face and the top. Then I went ahead and glued it together. I just used super glue there because it will hold perfectly well with that. And then we can install this guy. We'll just use a knob with a threaded stud and that goes right into that threaded insert that we installed in the end. And then you have adjustment here to adjust for different width cuts that you'd like to make. So let's go ahead and slide this guy back onto our sled. So there we go. That wraps up the small parts tray. Let's go ahead and head over to the table saw and see how this works. And we'll take a look at the stop block for the crosscut sled. All right, so there you can see how once you're making cuts on small pieces, when they get released from the main stock, they just fall down into that tray. Keeps them out of the blade and it keeps them from rolling off your bench. Now let's talk a little bit about the stop block. Okay, so when we convert back into the regular crosscut sled, we need to have a way to stop work pieces. The plans show creating this little stop block. Now I didn't film making this because it's pretty simple. It's just a piece of hardboard or plywood connected to a hard wood block. Then we marked a hole just like we did with uh, all the other pieces and drilled that for this insert. And this guy slides right on there. So with that stop block in place, you can set a distance for regular cross cutting applications. Now there's one thing I did on this stop block, and that is to chamfer this inside edge. And I actually went ahead and did the front edge as well, just because I had my plane in my hand. But that, again, is dust relief. So when this is in place, and you're using it as a stop block, as you slide your workpiece up against the block, it doesn't get pushed away by dust getting caught in that corner. So with those two little add-ons, we've expanded the capabilities of this Crocus Cut Sled. So in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and tackle two more accessories. One of which is gonna be a ripping jig for ripping small pieces to width. And then we'll also add a miter fence. So check back in with that video.